And now on Radio 4, it's time for the afternoon drama, saying the plot out loud. <laughs> oh, what a hectic day. Alison, Mr Hopkins just called to say make sure you get the very important presentation done. He needs it today. Oh, really? Oh, no, I'm very busy already, and this new task will make me busier. <laughs> but I'll do my best because my career is very important to me. <laughs> yes, I know. Also, your son's school has called. Your son has bumped his head, and it's not serious, but really you should probably go. Oh, no, poor Timmy. I love him very much. But what about this presentation for Mr. Hopkins? Crikey, Susan, you're in a dilemma. <laughs> That's right, I am. I find myself torn between my duties at work and my duties as a mother. <laughs> yes, I thought those were the things you were torn between. <laughs> Couldn't your husband go? Oh, no, Gerald is too busy. Although, why should I always be the one to drop everything? All right, you've changed my mind, and I will call him, though it's unusual for me to do so at this hour of the day. Mmm, mmm, I do enjoy our affair, Ashley. <laughs> you give me so much that my busy wife never can. Yes, well, for one thing, I'm a man. <laughs> yes, I know. That's one of the main things I had in mind. <laughs> oh, no, my phone. I'll answer it, shall I? Well, no, don't do that. We're having an affair. That would be ridiculous. Hello? <laughs> Gerald's secret boyfriend speaking. How can I help you? Why would you answer it like that? Shush. Well, if it was me, Claire, I'd cut his balls off. Oh, Karen, you're such a plain-speaking friend of mine. <laughs> yes, I am. More wine? Yes. Oh, Karen, my feelings are so confused and interesting. <laughs> I'm very angry with Gerald, but then I think maybe it's my fault. I know, I'll become a nun. No, I think that would be a false resolution. Yes, OK, I won't do that. Maybe instead you should talk to your husband's lover. Talk to him? That's the last thing I want to do. Although thinking it over, perhaps you're right. I will. <laughs> Thank you, Karen. Things are always so much clearer when I talk to you. Well, I do have a unique perspective on this sort of thing, because, after all, I used to be a man myself. <laughs> yes, I know. You're another example of how complicated people can be. Hello! Hello, I'm Ashley. You must be Rachel. That's right. Thank you for agreeing to meet me in this coffee shop. That's all right. Can I get you a coffee? You get me a coffee. That's hardly what I expected. But then it's been rather a day for shattered preconceptions. <laughs> oh, really? Uh, explain more about what you just said. Well, if you must know, you're not quite what I expected. <laughs> I suppose you expected me to flounce in here in a sequined tiara, did you? Well, that is what all gay people are like, isn't it? <laughs> I'm sorry to shatter your preconceptions again. No, that's OK. Go ahead. But actually, it isn't. Although I am a gay person, I used to be in the army, and I like sport. Gosh, people are complex, aren't they? Yes, that's what I've been finding on my emotional journey as well. Your emotional journey? Mm. <laughs> that's yet more food for thought. I haven't been thinking of you as a human being. Oh. How have you been thinking of me? Well, as the other... Oh, I almost said the other woman. <laughs> well, I'm certainly not that. No. <laughs> How funny. Even at this peak of dramatic stress, there's time for laughter. Yes, that is funny and interesting and moving. <laughs> Another coffee? What? Oh. Yes, I'd forgotten we were in a coffee shop. It, it, was, it was so loud when we came in, but now it's almost silent. Oh, uh, what about this one? Oh, yes. It looks very good on your hips. Buy it, Sophie. Mm, I think I will. You've got a very good eye. Well, yes, although I'm a non-typical gay man, I'm still very good at fashion. <laughs> and I bet you like musicals, too. I like some musicals, but not others. <laughs> You are so three-dimensional. Hmm. 
You know, Ashley, I'd never have thought at the beginning of this experience that I'd end up going clothes shopping with my husband's boyfriend. Well, people can change in surprising ways when faced with conflict, Helen. <laughs> That's an interesting insight. Yes, I know. Oh, by the way, what happened about Mr. Hopkins' presentation? Do you know, my priorities have changed so much, I don't even care anymore. You go, girl! <laughs> And what about your kid with the bumped head? Yeah, he's fine. <laughs> Lucy's Complex Dilemma was written by the BBC drama bot 5000. <laughs> and if you've been affected by any of the issues in the play, then God knows you've had them painstakingly clarified for you now. John Finnamore's Souvenir Programme was written by and starred John Finnamore with Margaret Cable Smith, Simon Kane, Laurie Lewin and Carrie Quinlan. Original music was by Susanna Pierce and the producer was Ed Morrish. And John Finnamore's Souvenir Programme will be back at the same time next week unless he receives a quarter of a million pounds in unmarked bills. You have seven days. Yeah.